Hola gringos and gringos. Welcome to Gringos or Us. It's me, Mark, flying solo again. This week, we're going to talk about driving. See you after the break. While you were watching that, I had to get my cigar and get a drink. Because if we're going to talk about driving, I need them both. If you're just finding our channel, welcome to Gringo's R Us. Hope that you stay around. Go ahead, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, like, share, and as always, ring that bell so you're notified of all new content when it drops. Like I said, we're going to talk about driving this week. It's really different down here. Not worse, just different. First off, I want to start with the fact that there's probably three different ways of doing, of classifying the driving. There is the carretera. There is in the major metropolitan cities. And then there's in the smaller cities and the neighborhoods. So those three are the predominant ways of looking at it. Let's start with the carretera. When you get on the toll roads or the carreteras, what you're going to find is that it's pretty similar to the style that we drive in the U.S. with one, one notable exception. That exception is that you're going to see about 25 to 30 percent of the vehicles driving on the shoulder. When they're driving on the shoulder, that's allowing people to pass them. And what you're going to see is you're going to see that the cars that are looking to pass are going to turn on their left-hand turn signal and then they're going to go around them. They sort of make the middle of the road the passing lane. So you have to be careful of not only who's behind you, but who's the right-hand side of you and what's coming at you because you don't want both of you to be passing at the same time. The other thing that you're going to notice is if people start to really get slowed down or if there is some type of traffic ensnarlment or topes coming up or a small Puebla, you will see them start to turn on their flasher lights. That is common amongst all three. They just, if it starts to slow down, on come the flashers, the emergency flashers. So you're driving down the road, you're making your time. You have to, like I said, pay attention to not only what's going on in front of you and behind you, but also what's coming at you from the other lane. A lot of the times what we noticed when we were driving down here was that a lot of the times the trucks will pull back over into the regular driving lane when it's not safe to get around them and then they will pull back onto the shoulder and get that serious indication that it's time to go around them. So a lot of the times you're going to take that as a signal to go, whoa, just hold back. When they get an opportunity, they'll pull back over on the shoulder and that'll give you the go around. Other than that, it's pretty simple with the exception of speed changes. It can go from 110 to 60 to 40 at the drop of a hat. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where those all fall in relation on my speedometer. So basically I just drive at the speed of the, of the traffic that's around me. Now, we did that. We went when we first came down, got a little touch of the city driving when going through Reynosa, but that was not much. Then we got to Monterrey. In Monterrey, there's a lot of cars trying to fit into only so much concrete. And it is a little bit crazy. You really have to watch all four sides and be aggressive at the same time. And I say be aggressive, not really aggressive. Assertive is probably the correct word. When it's time to get over, you sort of just have to work your way over. And don't be bashful, because if you're bashful, you're going to find your exit is three kilometers behind you. So you really just sort of have to work your way over and bully your way in just a little bit. And it's not really so much bullying because everybody else is doing it. Um, the other hard part when you start driving inside major cities is you've got all this traffic and then you have topes. And the thing there, at least in the major cities, you've got a fair enough amount of traffic that it makes it really simple to know when a tow is coming because A, everybody pretty much slows down, and B, you can see the cars move 
ahead of you doing the up and down motion. And it sort of just flows when you're dealing with the, the city traffic. Um, everything just is sort of like one big amoeba. It's like watching a bunch of five-year-olds play soccer. Everybody sort of just moves all at the same time, trying to occupy the same space. So that's pretty much in the city. Then when you start talking about driving in neighborhoods or in pueblas, you're not going to see a lot of stop signs. It pretty much is you take your time, you check both ways, you don't just blow into an intersection because you can't see around the corners because a lot of, the, especially if you're in a central, you can't see around the corner, don't know what's coming. And so you just sort of stick your nose out, take a peek down both directions, and then proceed whichever way you're going. And they pretty much rely on doing it on a one-to-one. -one. one goes, then the next one goes. One goes, then the next one goes. In the centros, you're going to find that there's going to be an awful lot of one-way streets. Especially here in San Miguel. You're going to find that because of the fact that you couldn't get two cars down the same street especially if anybody's parking. Um, you can almost always, as far as I've been able to tell, in a little bit of time I've been driving here in San Miguel, if there are cars parked in Centro, it's almost always gonna be a one-way street because the other streets are wide enough to have cars parked and still go two directions at the same time. The one really good thing is, it does seem that as a whole, the speed down here is much less than what it is in the U.S. I'm not going to say that's all the time because we've seen enough Audis and Mercedes and BMWs blow by us on the Carretera that we start to go, okay, have fun. But realistically, it is much slower. Even in Carretero and, and Monterrey, it was a slower pace of the driving. A lot of traffic, but just done at a slower pace. Here in San Miguel, it is even slower. And we found that to be true in Tequisquipan, um, also um, in uh, Almialco and Bernal. You're gonna have time to be able to do what you wanna do and not feel like, oh, I'm driving 50 miles an hour and I need to make that left-hand turn. Is that gonna happen sometimes? Yes, but as a whole, most of the time you're going to be going slow enough that you are going to be able to make those turns. It does appear that a stop sign down here is truly a recommendation. Um, it's sort of, I stop and I have been honked at a couple of times. Now that could have been gringos behind me that were wanting to honk at me, who knows. But it just sort of, you just slowly ease your way through there. Turn signals, that's another thing. It seems like they're optional, which, gee, if it's coming from the US, again, seems like they're optional. Um, I still use them, but I think I'm in the minority down here, and I think I was in the minority when I was in the States doing it. So you can't really depend upon it. Seems like they use it more religiously when going around passing than they do for making right and left hand turns. Speaking of turns, you always have to be conscious of the fact that somebody may be making a right hand turn from the left hand lane or the left hand turn from the right hand lane. We've seen that on numerous occasions. It is what it is. Um, and the other thing with this is they will also stop. Um, and if they're dropping somebody off, they will stop and drop them off and you just deal with it. We've seen it done on um, fairly busy roads. We've seen it done in central on small roads. So you sort of just have to maintain a good awareness at all times when you're driving. You throw that in together with trying to navigate someplace that you don't know and it can get a little stressful in the situation mm -hmm. where one's trying to navigate and tell you where to go and the other's trying to figure out just how to drive. We have found ourselves in a, an industrial park one time because we thought we were following it right and we got into a place and the GPS took us into 
a spot that basically said, nope, there's a gate here. You can't go. So it tried to take us down our shortcut, but the shortcut wasn't available. So all in all, really, driving here is not that different from driving there. You just have to slow down. You throw in the topes, which are a lot different here because of the fact that there are so many more are prevalent on city streets versus what you're going to find in the U.S., where most of the time I think we find them either in neighborhoods or in um, shopping centers. So you have to be aware of the topes. You have to be aware of the constant flow of traffic and the sudden change of that flow. And you have to pay attention to what is really going on and have a valuable navigator to help you get where you want to go. And realize that you're going to make mistakes. No two ways around it. You're going to drop the ball at some point. And the best part about it is in Mexico, there's returnos everywhere. So if you pass something, you just go up a little bit and you turn around and you come back and you try it all again. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Hopefully on the next one, you're going to get Gina back again. She's still working, so I think it's probably going to end up being a little bit of a half and half while this is going on. So sorry, guys, you just have to deal with me for a little bit. But other than that, we want to say thank you very much, A, for getting us to that 1,000 subscriber threshold. We appreciate all your contributions on that. And it wouldn't be near as much fun if you guys weren't along with us. So with that being said, remember, we are Gringos R Us, expats with a plan. We are doing it. You can too. Adios.